After a brief jaunt back inside of the stadium for block pushing, we now return to the great outdoors for the challenge that is triathlon. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Look at this sinewy course that we will be moving down, but that is just one of three elements, of course, making up the eponymous triathlon. Started back in 2020, for instance, when we did the sand and then going on to this style of track and then underwater. A year later, it was the track, the sand, and then underwater. And I can tell you, we have reached the double digits for events here in the Marble League, and we are knotted up front. Galactic and the Pinky, Savage Speeders two points back. But look at this middle tier, how close it is from the Orangers all the way back through the Green Ducks, just 12 points separating them. And that means that so much is up for grabs. This course especially could separate some of those marbles, depending on who is the best all-rounder, which in some ways is the definition of what it means to win the Marble League. Well, those are all-round great views right there, tucked inside of one of the turns. And you see eight marbles in the blocks to start things off for what we can only imagine will be the first of two heats. The other heat will include the other eight marbles. Some of these have been medalists before in previous events. And these particular marbles are off. Three captains in the group as they begin. Oh, somebody just left the track. Was that uh, Midnight Wisps, I believe? Wispy, I think, is out. Launched off the track. We'll have to see what happened there as they enter the sand for the first time. You can see the speed really building up. The Green Ducks had held the lead, but now it looks like Savage Speeders, who deliver some contact and a block to get them farther up. Green Ducks get back into second. And we've got a couple of those silver marbles close behind. It's Galactic and the Gliding Glaciers are battling side by side. Here they come into the water. Savage Speeders first to enter, but will they hold it to the line? We see some clever drafting. Three marbles all alongside as they move to the line and the bumblebees are gonna come across as they descend down to the bottom of your screen. And that was a close battle. Is this the contact that, yes, that sent the Midnight Wisps up into the air? And there's some contact going back and forth. Oh, that might have been Cosmo, I believe, who had that contact. On those replays, it did just look like a racing incident. And yes, race control has confirmed that. Disappointing for the Wisps. One of two captains to finish there at the bottom of the result. Team Galactic... Well, they will move on, but they'll be maybe feeling a little sheepish because of that. Racing incident, however, that's as far as you can take it. One more heat to go before we decide our finalists. Do these marbles have an advantage because they have seen the track and how the previous eight raced? We are about to find out as they descend through the track portion. It is Minty Maniacs out in front, although the O'Rangers just had a magnificent burst of speed and nearly took second place. They fall back and hold third in front of the Raspberry Racers who just lose out to Mellow Yellow. This is Shining Swarm now trying to give chase to Minty Maniacs in second place. Here they come. They're closing in the gap as they enter the sand. O'Rangers kind of in a land of their own. They tend to do well on the sand, but how do things change when they come into the water? Will they change a lot? Minty Maniacs have lost the lead. They are crawling right now. They've fallen back to third, possibly fourth. Oh, Rangers challenging for the lead. They get it. Who's going to get fourth, though? The final transfer spot. That was very close. As we take a look, did Primary somehow get it? Yes, they did just barely by three hundredths of a second over Yeller. Wow. Yellow, the reserve for Mellow Yellow, came that close. The water portion does not make up a huge chunk of this race by distance or time, but it is absolutely climactic and crucial to master. We've seen so far some marbles just barreling into it, hoping that they will be able to get it under control and others making great use of the toe if they get behind another marble. The bottom three in that order, well, our championship leaders in the Marble League are one of them and one of three captains to finish at the bottom of the order. That is surprising. So with the leaders out, does this open the door to any of these marbles that you see on your screen, especially the likes of Team Galactic? Off we go for the final. 
and it's Shining Swarm out in front. Team Galactic very close behind. Savage Speeders with a nice outside move into that turn as we snake back and forth through the track section. It's almost a slalom with the speed that they move through here. They're entering the sand. That was a good battle there for third place. How does it shake out? Savage Speeders have fallen back to third. Last medalist position. Well out in front. Team Galactic, a massive lead. Onto the sand, nearly into the water. Here we come. Into the water they dive. It's Team Galactic's to lose at this point. Shining Swarm is in there, but look at the Bumblebees. They're trying to catch that draft. They come across the line. I don't know who got third place, but Team Galactic have done enough and have won gold in the triathlon. And by three hundredths of a second, the Bumblebees have done it again. They hold on at the line by a nose. Was it a proboscis? I don't know. Look at how close this battle was. Team Galactic, wire to wire, almost. That was unbelievable. And for Cosmo, the captain of Team Galactic, the first individual medal in their career. And that is worth applause. Went over a second faster in the final than in the heat. Well, the triathlon is always going to give you some unexpected results, especially when you get that close down there in the end. And we see Team Galactic coming through as champions at an opportune time when the Pinkies were relegated into the bottom eight. But of course, also the Bumblebees are up there. And here we take a look. Perfect timing at the updated standings. And what a jump. Team Galactic shoots to the front, well over the Savage Speeders. Pinkies fall back to third. Bumblebees are close behind with the O'Rangers. And then Raspberry Racers, Gliding Glaciers, Mellow Yellow Green Ducks, and Crazy Cat Size all fairly close. Boy, with a few more events to go, this is up for grabs, especially in the middle section of the standings. Who will find their way to the front or who will defend their leader position? You'll have to stay tuned and find out.